pick all three. I'll take these three. I'll take these two. All right, and here we go. Okay, y'all, let's place you anywhere here on the purple. You can find a spot for this oatmeal and grits. Oh my goodness. Look at this pile we're making through the season of Lent. Thank you, Carter. Perfect. All right, we've got it arranged the way we like it. Now, the three of you, I think you three know better but sometimes we've had kids at church here who think that I live at the church and they don't understand that I actually have a house that I go to and I go grocery shopping and everything. This week, last Sunday actually, I went grocery shopping and I ran into Miss Fran, who you, you all know sits behind you at the back of the church. And she got really excited about all this oatmeal and grits. Do you know what she said to me? She said, do you know what we need for oatmeal and grits? How do you make all this? What do you add to it? And I said, Water? And she said, yeah, water, water. But during Lent, you're not putting water in the baptismal font. Isn't that amazing? And I said, okay. And she said, I think it's really neat that during Lent, we're not filling the font with water at the beginning of church, but we're bringing, you've got the kids bringing oatmeal and grits that need water uh, to fill hungry bellies for Greater Birmingham Ministries. So I am offering that to you all. We need water uh, in, to make these wonderful breakfasts for people, but we need it later. Miss Beverly reminded me the other day that right now, by the way, Publix has buy one, get one on some oatmeal products. So we're gonna keep bringing in these oatmeal containers. Do you guys think we can get to 100 containers of oatmeal and grits before we get to Easter? What do you think? You think we can get to 100? I bet we can. I, I don't know. I, I bet we can. I bet we can. We'll have to count them later. Should we read some scripture and start worship? Okay. The prophet Isaiah writes, Let all who thirst come to the waters. Let all who are hungry come and eat. Amen. Friends, grace to you and peace, and welcome to worship here at this joint service of Edgewood Presbyterian Church and Second Presbyterian Church on the third Sunday in Lent. We are continuing our journey with the word pause and with the Psalms, seeing what these Psalms can offer us on our journey through these 40 days to the foot of the cross with just a few weeks left to go. Friends, welcome to this place, this place of welcome, this place where we take Jesus and the gospel more seriously than we take ourselves, this place where we hope you will find a home. I invite you now to please rise in body or spirit and join Kelly in the responsive call to worship. Through Christ, our God invites us to worship. Come to me, all who are tired, weary, and worn, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. 
God, we come before you bringing who we are. All that we are, tonight and coming. We seek your wholeness and blessing. Receive us as we are, and teach us to welcome all that you have welcomed us. Let us pray. Eternal God, your realm has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and follow it, that we may become instruments of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, the Apostle Paul writes, In the name of Christ, I urge you, be reconciled to God. Let us join our voices together now in prayer. Eternal God, fountain of all life, we confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We thirst for things that will never satisfy us, we worship things that will never bring salvation. We have been careless, and we squander what you give us. Forgive us, O oh God, and give us living water, that we may never thirst again. Lead us home, that we may again find in you our life and joy and peace. Speak to our hearts through your Spirit, and strengthen us to follow Christ, to whom we open our hearts now in silence.
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Listen so that you may live. The steadfast love of the Lord never fails. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and restored to new life. Let's pray. Gracious God, our way in the wilderness, guide us by your word through these 40 days and minister to us with your Holy Spirit so that we may reformed, restored, and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our gospel lesson comes from John's second chapter. Listen for the good news. The Jewish Passover was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jewish leaders asked him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jewish leaders replied, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? but he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel for the people of God. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Our project for the season of Lent has been to hear these very familiar gospel stories that carry us through the season alongside the Psalms that we're giving special attention to. So hear now these words from Psalm 63 and let us listen for what the Spirit is saying to the church this day. O oh God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast. And my mouth praises you with joyful lips when I think of you in my bed and meditate on you in the watch, the watches of the night. For you have been my help. And in the shadow of your wings, I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek to destroy my life shall go down into the depths of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword. They shall be prey for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear by God shall exult. For the mouths of liars will be stopped. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. 
At this year's Grammy Awards, one-fifth of the nominated songs checked in at under three minutes long. Pop songs have been getting shorter for a while now, from an average of four minutes and 14 seconds in 1990, 4.14, to just three minutes and 15 seconds 30 years later. The songs are getting shorter. Now, 1990 was the peak, with cassettes and then CDs everywhere. Artists were no longer limited by vinyl. Of course, radio stations would still have their way, requiring an edit if you wanted your song to get any airplay. But since 1990, the songs have gotten shorter again. NPR had a story this week about the trend of pop songs being remixed and, and sped up, sped up to be used in clips on social media, on TikTok and Instagram. The reporter at raised concerns about this speeding up. She was worried about the loss of the artist's intent. When the song was created, it was meant to be heard in a certain way, and that was certainly not with the singer sounding like a chipmunk. <laughs> Speeding up a song can mean losing a piece, a piece of what the songwriter was trying to express about love or loss or anger or despair. Songwriters have been adjusting for a while. In the digital era, the concept of the album has changed drastically. Artists can no longer count on us listening to all of the songs on an album or listening to them in any particular order. They used to be able to weave a story through an album and now they have to adapt. This NPR reporter so concerned about the integrity of a song well, she gave some time to the counterpoint that art becomes what the culture does with it. She said that was true, but she still lamented that so much culture right now is about rushing through things. She said people listen to podcasts and audiobooks at higher speeds. Any of you listen to a book at 1.5? Anybody got 1.7, 1.7, 2, no, 1.5, so anybody go to 2? All right. People listen to podcasts and audiobooks at higher speeds because everyone is rushing to get to the next thing. And she wondered if we are really hearing the music. Now, maybe this reporter for NPR didn't mean to invite us into Lenten practice. But you can't prove that. The psalmist seems ready to slow down, to savor, to experience, to hear the music. There's so much sensuous language in this psalm, language reveling in the, in the physicality of the pursuit of God. We Presbyterians get nervous when the preacher wiggles a little. We don't like to talk about bodies, but here in the psalm, we read of a, of a, a thirsty soul, a thirsty soul parched and wobbly. After beholding God's power and glory with the eyes, those formerly dried out lips praise and hands are raised in ecstatic glory. And then there's the mouth again, feeding the soul with a rich feast. As the psalmist reclines and rests and languidly lets thoughts of God wash over him, his lips praise again. And his soul clings to God's uplifting hand. Even as the psalmist turns to his enemies, he envisions them sinking into the earth, becoming food for wild beasts. All those other mouths, the mouths of liars, will be, will be plugged up. 
whoever wrote this is not someone who fast forwards through prayer, through longing, through an experience that trends holy. And a God, a God who bothers with us, who, who speaks and sings through us, a God who sends a son to endure sweat and ache and hunger and thirst, this is a God who desires for us to hear the music, to feel the tempo of the song in our joints, to experience the whole album. If we are longing for God, if we are asking for blessing, maybe we have to slow down. Slow down at least to God's pace. This hurrying up, this skipping, this 1.5 speed. Often it's a response to the pressure to get things done, to accomplish, to squeeze more in. Followers of Jesus recognize that none of that is part of the language or personality or ethos of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus heals the ones he meets, feeds the ones he meets, he blesses the ones he meets, and then he rests, and he prays, and he eats, and he drinks. Jesus gives out no awards for most or, or best, and he gets really worried about, or angry with, anyone who puts financial gain above a neighbor. All this rushing around, the rushing around that we do is a confession of what's really important to us. All this rushing around shows what we value. I find that condemning for myself. But here's the good news. If rushing around shows what we really value, making even the smallest choice to pause, to slow down, to plop into a beanbag chair to hear God's song about us, any movement in that direction is an affirmation of faith. It's an act of resistance. It's a protest. It might not be as dramatic as turning over the tables of the money changers, but it is just as much an assertion that the systems that we have created, the ones that make us rush around, the big ones and the small ones, these systems are inherently disconnected from what God dreams for us. We might be in a desert time right now, or, or a rich feast moment, or often along the path from one to another. All those moments are holy. The aching and the longing are holy. The fulfilled heart and filled belly are holy. The path between them is holy. But trying to fast forward, God will trip us up. We will get lost. We'll turn the dinner table into a counting table. We will miss the blessings. At 1.5, we miss the blessings. When our priorities get wonky, we miss the blessings. This is what sin can look like. Missing blessing. Imagine for a second this congregation, Edgewood, choosing something, anything, choosing something over the transformative power of welcome and celebration and openness towards, towards LGBTQ Christians. Imagine us doing that. It's not, it's hard to imagine in some ways, but it's not hard to imagine in others because the road, the road to a big, fancy, successful church in Alabama, the road to a successful church in Alabama is lined with rainbow sacrifices. Sacrifices of teenagers, 
and choir members and faithful servants. We here would be so much poorer, so much less blessed if we had missed the blessing of the beloved children of God, the children of God who survived the soul culling of other communities, but who still somehow couldn't resist Jesus. We would be so much poorer, and I don't even know what the word we means in that sentence. I don't know who'd be left. It's faster to denigrate. It's easier. It's faster to put down. It's faster to mock. It is obviously politically expedient to denigrate and put down and mock. But when you do that, you miss out on the blessings. You miss out on the blessing of diversity, the blessing of art, of lifting up. In Alabama and every other state, pastors and legislators have chosen Christian nationalism as an answer to their fears and their longing for power. In addition to being theology that is about as far from Jesus and scripture as you can possibly get, choosing that idolatrous path also means you miss the little blessing we know as democracy. You miss the blessing of modern medicine and science we know well in Alabama. You miss the blessing of life that you so vociferously claim to defend. And you miss Jesus by a thousand miles. Missing these blessings leaves us forever in the dry and weary land. We're stuck there in the desert with no map to the sanctuary, no map to the table, no map to the bed, no map to the shadow of God's wings. We miss the blessings. We are stuck outside the temple selling and buying instead of giving and receiving. Slow down. Slow down, Joe. Slow down, congregation. Slow down, Presbyterians. Slow down and make a feast of blessings instead. A feast of blessings. I'm not asking you to do this, but if I did ask you to look around at the congregation, at these people, or to look down at your hands, if I asked you to come up with five blessings in your life right now, I bet you could. Slow down. We know that we are happier when we notice, when we name, when we practice gratitude, when we savor the song we're in for the notes that resonate with our hearts. Make a feast of blessings around you. Make a feast of blessings around you. The psalmist writes, I will bless you as long as I live. I will bless you, God, as long as I live. We get this question every year from Mary when she says, my soul magnifies the Lord. We talk about it in men's Bible study on Friday morning. How do you bless God? How do you magnify God? How do we bless God? Well, yes, by keeping our end of the covenant of grace. Yes, we bless God by obeying God in seeking justice in the land. We also bless God by remembering that pesky little fact that God loves every other person just as much as God loves you. If you were to bless in some way the child, the partner, the family, the house of any other person in this room, you bless their child, their partner, their family, or their house, I guarantee you that they would say that you had blessed them as well. And so it is with God. Bless your neighbor and you are blessing one that God loves. And so you are blessing God. Bless the ones you meet. Bless the world such that those among us who are stuck in unredeemable stories can find a way to the table. Make a feast of blessings around you. Make an album, an anthology, an orchestra, a buffet, 
a seven course dining experience of blessing. In just three Sundays, we are going to enter that week of, of minor chords and table betrayal and abandonment and loneliness known as Holy Week. We've got time to pack before we get there. Store up treasures to get through that week. Store up treasure, treasures by making a feast of blessings with the time that's left. Bring them with you and let them carry you through that long week. And then when you get there, don't fast forward through it. Savor. Listen. Hear. And find praise with your joyful lips on the other side. Amen. <laughs> gospel according to John, Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Let us all now share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. Friends, a few announcements for the community. First, please find the fellowship pads that are on the center aisle side of your pew. And let us know you are here and how to be in touch and pass them to your neighbor so that they end up over by those stained glass windows. There are also, there's also a few more minutes to get in any prayer requests for this week. There's information in the back of your worship folder about how to do that via text message, or you can go analog and write them on the cards that are sitting in front of you in the pew racks. All right, after worship today, we have our usual Sunday school classes, 
And then after our Sunday school classes, we have a Christian Nurture Committee meeting. They've got lots coming up to work on. Excited for that. Uh, it's a full week. There's a lot going on. I'll hit you with Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday evening, we have, of course, handbells and choir and dinner in between. Dinner this week is barbecue. On Thursday, we it's the first Thursday of the month, which means we are doing EPC Eats. If you haven't joined us for one of these, it's just dinner out with a bunch of people who cause a ruckus at a restaurant and uh, make a waiter or a waitress, you know, pull their hair out a little bit. Um, and there's no agenda. We just come together and eat and have dinner at 6.30 this week. We, uh, this month, we are trying out Luca Legato, the brand new place here in Homewood uh, that has gotten some really good reviews. Now, simultaneously, we are torn here a little bit. On Thursday evening at 7 p.m., Anna Carter Florence, who wrote the book that our book club is reading right now, A is for Alabaster, will be at Thank You Books um, in Crestwood, uh, our favorite Presbyterian bookstore. Um, and so you have to choose. We can't do dinner and Anna Carter Florence, so, you know, you got to decide what you're, what you're more interested in on that particular night, but that's okay. Because the next day, if you happen to be free, there's an event at Southminster Presbyterian that um, Elizabeth Goodrich and I are in charge of, in which Anna and another scholar from Columbia will be working with preachers and worship leaders on Pentecost planning, and we're really excited about that event. If you want to know more, um, we've had information about, and you can ask me after worship, but that's this coming Friday. Also this coming Friday evening, our friends at Temple Bethel, um, if you were here for our interfaith Thanksgiving service in November, uh, their rabbi, Rabbi Stephen Henkin, uh, was our preacher uh, and got some good laughs at the expense of our Jesus window. Um, uh, the folks at Temple Bethel have invited us to an interfaith Shabbat service uh, in the, uh, I believe it's at 4, 4.45, no, 5, 5.45. Um, and then there's a dinner afterwards. Of course, the service is free to attend, but uh, you have to register and pay for the dinner. That information uh, is in the newsletter. We'll make sure it's out tomorrow or Monday, uh, Tuesday in the weekly email. Um, if you have questions, if you want to go, let me know. I'm going. It should be a lot of fun. Um, the dinner after features a conversation between the rabbi and this scholar who's here from Brandeis University. Uh, they're going to be talking about interfaith stuff in the world of Judaism. It's going to be really interesting. All right, so that's Friday. Then on Saturday, uh, our folks who valiantly give their time to our grounds here have invited you between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. You do not have to stay the whole time to show up anywhere in that window, uh, and they want to put you to work weeding and doing other stuff in the uh, front yard of the church to pretty things up for uh, Easter coming up. Our women's group meets next week. We'll remind you about that in the weekly email. If you're not getting the weekly email, please talk to me after worship. Um, our women's group meets next week for their Bible study, and they have a retreat coming up the weekend of Palm Sunday. And if you are not connected about that retreat and would like to attend, please talk to Joan Reisinger. Would you wave your hand, Joan? Talk to Joan after worship, and she'll make sure that you are connected to that group. Friends, as the ushers come to receive the offering, hear these words. Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also.
After the bread has been broken and the cup has been poured, I will invite you to come down to this sumptuous, rich feast that we share together. Please come down via the center aisle and tear from the common loaf and then move to the stations where the elders will have the cups. The brown cups have wine, the blue cups have grape juice. You can dip your bread into the cup of your choice and return to your seat via the side aisle. There is a contact-free station over by the windows to your far left and to your far right. Our Deacon Grace will have the gluten-free option for those who require it. After all have been served, uh, come through the line. If you wish the elements to be brought to you, please just give us a little wave um, and we will head right to you. Friends, Jesus said, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus invites us to find rest for our souls at this table that is not Edgewood's table, not Second Presbyterian's table, but Christ's own table to which you are invited without exception, without hesitation, loud and clear. You are invited to this feast. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, O God, in this dry and weary land. You set a table for us in the wilderness and provide for all of our needs. Even when we complain against you, you feed us with bread from heaven. When we quarrel and question your grace, you give us water from a stone. How can we keep silent? Even dry bones in the valley of death start to sing your praise. Therefore, we join with heavenly choirs and the faithful of every time and place as the people say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son. He was born a child in Palestine, a brown-skinned child, the child of a teenage mom, a Jewish child, a poor child, a child born under the thumb of an emperor. He was a refugee. His family worked with their hands. He broke bread with the unclean, the poor, the cast out, the marginalized, the broken and the brokenhearted. He was ordered to die by the government in conspiracy with religious leaders. But death could not hold him. The tomb could not contain him. Together, O oh God, we are Christ's resurrection people, and we are resilient. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this cup, and we joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer ourselves to you as a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Now pour out your Holy Spirit upon this bread, this cup, these people. By the power of your Spirit, breathe life into our dust and hope into our bones. Make us one flesh and one blood, one in the body of Christ. Let us live to sing your praise and show your love to all until your wilderness wander, until our wilderness wandering is over and we feast with you, O God, forever in the land that you have promised. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now with the boldness of the children of God, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us in whatever language or version speaks from our heart, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our Lord Jesus, on the night of His arrest, was at table with His disciples and He took bread. And after giving thanks to God, He broke it. And He gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is My body given for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. And in the same way, He took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant sealed in My blood, shed for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of Me. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving grace of our Lord until He comes. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Come now to the welcome table. said at this rich feast. We come together in prayer now 
We have joys and concerns to share with the gathered congregation. Continue to pray for Bennett, one of our former BYG youth who's at First Presbyterian who is battling cancer in his freshman year of college. Pray for Bennett and pray for his family. I lift up the prayer of uh, thanks that Mike, Marilyn Gross's husband, had successful gallbladder surgery on Thursday and is recovering well. And a special prayer for our friends at Grace Presbyterian Church in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, who this afternoon are installing a new pastor, the Reverend Caroline Kelly. Um, I will bring them your love in Tuscaloosa this afternoon. Uh, very exciting for that church. After a long, long run with a good pastor, Caroline has big shoes to fill. Friends, as we pray, I invite your response to lead us, O Lord, to be from death to life. Out of the ashes, O oh God, up from the dust, we bring our prayers to you, saying, Lead us, O oh Lord, from death to life. O oh God, retrain our appetites toward healing and liberation. If we fast this Lent, let it be in that ancient way which gives our portions to the hungry and oppressed. Lead us, O oh Lord, from death to life. And if we have need, O oh God, let this be a season of reclamation, that we would accept what is owed to us, that we would take all that our dignity demands. Lead us, O oh Lord, from death to life. O oh God, grant that we would find our own healing magnified as we participate in the healing of the cosmos. And let our darkest nights amplify the light that we would look up and see no less than the very face of God in one another. Lead us, O Lord. O God, we ask for your presence, your strength, your courage, your will to be borne out in us, in our lives, for those who need us, for those among us who are grieving, who are stressed out, who are exhausted, who are fearful, who are despairing, who are sick, who are dying. Work through us, O God, to build a community of faith around each of these needs. Allow us to be the shoulders, the hands, the feet of Christ. Lead us, O Lord, in death to life. Jesus, remember us when you come into your kingdom. Lead us, O Lord, from death to life. Restore in us, O God, the joy of your salvation. Renew and sustain our spirits so that we may live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our hope and our strength, we pray. Amen.
Friends, I invite you to please be seated. And before the kids come up, I'm going to call to order a meeting of the congregation of Edgewood Presbyterian Church. Uh, Mr. Clerk, we have a quorum. We have one item of business. The session has approved a slate of officers from the officer nominating committee. You might notice that it is March. We were supposed to have done this a little bit ago, but it's okay. Uh, we're 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 going to be okay. So uh, the the slate that we are bringing includes for the uh, class of 2026 for elder Alice Morgan, Richard Galbraith, and Pavlina Stefik, and for the class of 2026 for deacons, two brand spanking new deacons, nice and shiny, Scott Flowers and Deanna Daly. This comes from the set from the committee through the session. It does not require a second. It is moved. Is there any discussion? Are there any nominations from the floor? Didn't think so. Are you ready to vote? All in favor of electing the slate as presented by the officer nominating committee, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Aye. Awesome. Thank you. All right. That meeting will adjourn. Uh, I will, I have, why don't we do this? I'll have a motion to adjourn that meeting uh, with the charge from the steps and then the blessing and charge for the congregation. Is there a motion? Second. Zach, I heard a motion. Is there a second? second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Awesome. I will now invite the kids to join me on the steps for the charge from the steps. Hello, Oliver. Hello, Clara. Here comes Charlie. Here comes Harrison. I thought so. Okay, here we go. And here comes Carter. All right. Do you all know what a pause button is on a remote control? Have you ever seen a pause button? It's a little circle button and there's two lines on it and you hit it. And what happens when you pause something on TV? It's it stops. That's right, Oliver. It stops. So I want to try a little bit of a game here. Um, can you all show me driving a school bus, driving a school bus, driving a school bus, driving a school bus, and pause. Nice work. All right. How about washing a window, washing a window, washing a window, and pause. Very nice. All right. What else should we do? Um, oh, we're, we're going to be sea captains, so we're on a ship. We're driving the ship, we're driving the ship. Oh, go left, 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 and pause. All right. Now let's, 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 uh, have you ever seen someone toss pizza dough up in the air? Yeah. yeah. So let's take our pizza and let's toss it up in the air. We're making pizza. It's going to be delicious. What's on our pizza? Cheese. Cheese. Excellent. Pe pepperonis. What'd you say? Black olives. This all sounds good to me. And pause. Oh, you got the pizza dough fell on your head. Nice, nice work. The choir is very impressed. Um, now we're playing a silly game, but sometimes I need to pause. I might be uh, walking in the park and I see someone and for no reason I get really angry. You think I should go up to them and yell at them for no good reason? No, I should pause and think about what I'm doing. Sometimes, now, here's a funny thing. My parents are here. They're in those white shirts right there in the fourth row. Sometimes they get frustrated with me and they say something and I want to go, yeah, well, should I do that? No, I have to pause and say, now let's think about this. Sometimes, sometimes we get upset or we get frustrated or we even just get too excited. Have any of you been too excited sometimes? Ever? Yeah, I can see smile on Carter's face. Excited. Too excited. And we just need to pause. And that's our theme for Lent. We've been talking about oatmeal, grits, and pause. And so I want you to think this week, and maybe if your families are paying attention, they could try it with you. If you're about to do something that you're not supposed to do, what would happen if someone said, hey, Oliver, pause. Do you think you could stop? No. Yeah, 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 we'll see. We're going to try it, all right? So I want you all, and the grown-ups can try this too. 
Use that word pause this week to stop yourself from doing that thing that God probably doesn't want you to do. Can we pray? Dear God, thank you for walking with us. Thank you for riding with us. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you for the chance to pause. You love us, and we love you. Amen. All right, y'all stand up. I did pause in the prayer. Thanks for noticing, Oliver. And we'll invite the congregation to rise in body or spirit. And in this season, I will remind you that the steadfast love goes with, of God goes with you. The abiding presence of Christ goes with you. The empowering Holy Spirit guides you. And remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. If any wish to follow me, let them take up their cross. Amen. Thank you.